my name is Temta and welcome to My Kitchen, Her Story, where we celebrate all things female leadership. Today's guest is a powerhouse of a woman who is going against the grain. She's a female leader in a position where only one in five are women and only one in 25 are women of color. She is a mother of three, she's a wife, but she's also a huge advocate of women and young people in a workplace. Please meet the president of Vista US, Leona Key. We want to start a company that will uh, finance private aircraft. Maybe our next career we can open a restaurant. Welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this and cook some delicious dishes I wanted to say but no we're cooking one dish <laughs> one dish yeah yes um, I'm really excited before we dive into your background um, and tell the audience a little bit more about your career and all that you have achieved because there's so much there to tell um, can you please tell us what we're cooking today of course so we're actually cooking a couple things yeah um, very simple we're making a Greek salad okay and then we're gonna make a New York strip um, very simple again, just very simple uh, salt and pepper uh -huh. with chimichurri sauce. Mm, love chimichurri sauce. Yeah. It has that zinc to it. It's so delicious, but it's really easy to make. Exactly, and it makes honestly everything taste better. I sometimes dip my bread in chimichurri sauce. It's just great. <laughs> love it. Okay, amazing. Why are we making this dish? Is there like any significance to the dish? To be honest, um, both of the dishes, they're just very simple to make. At the mm -hmm. same time, together, they make a meal. Um, I have to say, I'm not a very uh, good cook. They're only... We'll see about that today. <laughs> <laughs> they're only probably less than five dishes I can cook. Right. The dishes that my kids actually like and also the dishes that I can make them in under 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, Greek salad. As you probably know, every single ingredient is big chunks, so they're simple. Yeah. And a steak, I think, um, I'm from New York. Okay. So it's very, very easy to get a very good quality, quality meat. cut, mm -hmm. right? So yep. you can get that, and honestly, you don't need much. You just need salt, pepper, simple, you know, seasoning. Simple marinade. And yeah. Marinade. There's no marinade, actually, just season. Okay. And uh, you put it on a pan, four minutes on each side. Medium rare is great. Okay, amazing. I'm so excited. Um, that sounds great. So I'm going to be your sous chef, so you can boss me around, which you, I, I was going to say you are used to in your daily life because you are such a high power individual, entrepreneur, businesswoman. However, I think you do it all out of so much like, you know, respect and love that it's not really bossing around, but please do. I am here to thank you for saying that. <laughs> yeah. And not many people know. Okay. We will dive into her story. I know now I'm blubbing so much. Okay. I'm going to start cutting some of the Greek salad ingredients then, okay. and then you go ahead and treat this piece of meat as you like. All right. I'm <laughs> going to start with that. Now, um, as we're starting, uh, do you want to tell me a little bit more around your background? Because you went from, you went from Wall Street to private aviation. There are not many female executives in either of those industries. I mean, in, in Wall Street more so now, years later, but and in private aviation for sure. Start from wherever you like to start. Tell me a little bit more. Of course. Um, so I think I have to say the path wasn't planned. If you asked me at 22, I wouldn't be able to tell you today that I will be doing private aviation. But mm -hmm. what I could tell you at 22 is that <clears throat> I'm just going to put on a little salt on this. Yep. Um, is that I wanted to be on Wall Street because that was my education. I was getting my master's degree uh, in financial engineering. Okay. What, what, and, um, what, what does a financial engineering mean really? So ultimately it's a lot of math. It's a lot of probability courses. And mm -hmm. I did that when the degree was just getting designed. So 
So I started uh, during the degree a lot of math, and um, I moved. I was on the west coast. I moved to the east coast. I was in Princeton. It was it was freezing. It was um, freezing. It's, it's in New Jersey. It's next to New York. In okay. The winter, it was freezing. I um, love that. That's that's the first fact we need to know. It was really cold. <laughs> it was really cold, and I think um, I was never used to. You have to. You know, I was used to city life. I was not used to. You have to go out and drive to places. Yep. Uh, so I think that factor. Obviously, I studied really hard, but at the same time, I was determined. I need to graduate as soon as possible so I can move to New York. So that it's not anymore so freezing cold. So I don't need to be like you know driving or go yeah. to the parking lot to dig the car out.、Um, so I graduated from、uh, from the program, and every single one of my classmates ended up on Wall Street, either doing sales or trading.、Mm -hmm. uh, so I ended up with a job for a structure product and in sales and trading. So I structure. Product with asset back, so I was doing. Sorry, let me dial back. So I was doing asset back financing. So、mm -hmm. everything I do, I will structure something. For example, it could be、uh, your home loan that was being tranched and sliced and financed, and then sell it to the investors. So it could be the underlying assets could be containers, could be cars, could be ships, anything that with a real asset component.、Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Um, the underlying assets was airplanes. Okay. So those airplanes, however, they were not really private airplanes; they're commercial airplanes because、right. those assets,、uh, without talking too much about it, those assets are very standard. It will be like your standard、um, apartment building, like you know, an, an apartment at one Hyde Park. Each single one of them would look, or as. If you price it, it will be very similar because they're in the same block. They're they're standard, right? Cookie cutters.、Mm -hmm. So so is the commercial airlines airplane. Right.、Um, and now, when you want to look at a house, for example, we're in Chelsea today. You look at a house outside, a house, two houses next door. Right. They could be having very different prices because you don't know how the house looks inside or what's the the blueprints for the house. Right. Okay.、Um, So I was doing that on Wall Street for、um, for over a decade.、Mm -hmm. My last job was at a company that had one of the largest aviation funds.、Um, then two of my colleagues came to me one day. That's after I had my first daughter. Came to me one day, said that、uh, well, actually I was pregnant with her. Said that we want to start a company that does to finance private aircraft. Right.、Uh, because like what I mentioned before. There are a lot of companies, several very large players in the marketplace to finance,、um, to lease aircraft. Right? For example, British Airways—they don't own a lot of the aircraft; they actually lease it from leasing companies. The、right. leasing company own it, and、uh -huh. then the Wall Street will be then tranche it up and then sell it to investors. So those are the loans that I was doing. But in the marketplace, they're not real players. They weren't not real players. To to finance private aircraft,、mm -hmm. except for private banks, because if you think about it, if you give a bank a hundred million dollars to manage、right. of your money,、uh -huh. then you want to go buy a boat, so you want to buy a plane. Then they said, okay, I will I will lend you fifty million dollars. Those are are based. Those lending are based on credit. They're based on your credit. You're basically borrowing your own money.、Mm -hmm. Uh, those are not based on assets, so、okay. they're not really a company that was.、Um, thank you for that, by the way.、Uh, there's not really a company、yeah. that was doing、um, aircraft financing, private aircraft financing, based on the asset itself.、Mm -hmm. So we wanted to start a company like that. So I thought at the time it was a good idea, but because、mm -hmm. it's a very, very asset、um, intense business. Right, no matter, I can imagine. I mean, the whole you mean、um, airline business, right?、Uh, airline business and private aircraft. I think、yep. no matter how wealthy you are,、uh, you wouldn't be very smart to to buy a fifty million dollar asset with cash. Just like when people you go out with cash, you always use some kind of financing component. It's the same as like you are buying a house that costs. A lot of money. You wouldn't necessarily go and go in with the cash. You would go and mortgage it. Exactly.、And、right. I, I think people do that because. You obviously, as as someone that let's say someone is worth a billion dollars, 
there's a business that they're very good at doing. Mm -hmm. They could save their cash, preserve their cash to generate more money with their own business. So mm -hmm. you could borrow the money yep. to finance the aircraft purchase, right? Very expensive assets purchase. Right. And, I mean, people do the same with arts, with yachts. So you went, so your friends came to you and said, hey, let's start a company that will help financing airplanes. Correct. So right. this actually colleague said that we want to start a company that mm -hmm. will uh, finance private aircraft. Got it. It's, I think the biggest challenges of that is that you, it's a very capital intense business. If you want to finance a hundred aircraft, we would need to raise somewhere between two to five million billion dollars to do that. So there are only a handful of people um, or funds, private equity funds, the biggest ones that could finance that. Mm -hmm. So it took us, long story short, it took us about two years to find two private equity companies that are willing to write a check. So they're Carlisle and Blackstone, the two of the largest ones. They're okay. financing this company. Um, the company is called Global Jet Capital. I think this is very hot now. Yeah, so no, uh, it, this will steam like that okay. until it's... You're a better cook than I am, so if you well, say no. Something. So, okay, let's like let's test this because I've seen it somewhere. Okay. Oh, okay. Do you want some water? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm going to use this water now for um, testing something with our hot skillet, iron skillet. I don't know whatever that thing is called. Some of your water. Thank you. And I'm going to use mine to test it. So I've been told that if you sprinkle water on it and it jumps, then it's ready. So. Uh, okay, are you sure about this? Because no, I mean, let's okay. do it. It's jumping, it's dancing, it's All right. ready. <laughs> All right. Um, I just want to point out there was smoke coming out, so I think that's also a good indicator that it's quite hot. Okay, okay. I mean, I just wanted to do this trick, okay? Let All me right. do it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put this on. Woo. All right. That's okay. About, that Wait. sounds good, yeah? It sounds, I mean, it sounds... Yeah. Okay, so four minutes. Four minutes. Somebody set the time to four minutes. Um, cool. You're in charge of a steak. All right. Don't forget it. Um, I'm in charge of Greek salad. Yes, so you, you found then two private equity firms, Blackstone and Carlisle, Hello. that agreed to finance. How much did you guys raise? Uh, more than two billion dollars. Two so, billion dollars. That's a lot of money. So through that company, I met uh, VistaJet chairman and founder. Because VistaJet, as a business, we own our entire fleet. Okay. What we give our members is that our members enjoy as a free solution. Right. They are purchasing the hours, and they're good to fly on our fleet. Today, we have close to 360 private aircraft around the world. Mm -hmm. um, so VistaJet. As owner of this assets, would need to go out and finance the fleet. Pause there, because I would love to dive into what's happening with VistaJet and how you got into there and what is the whole sense and point in this business model and structure behind it. But actually, before we get into that, I would love to understand a little bit better why did you decide to make a switch from a very... I wanted to say a secure Wall Street job, but there's nothing secure about those jobs. You know, it can go up in flames any day. But why did you decide to go from a corporate job to becoming an entrepreneur and starting something on your own? So I always wanted to be, you know, then it would be something that belongs to me. Yeah. And I wanted to create something, you know, so you're not just, uh, I, I wanted to, to make an impact and create something. So we started that company mm -hmm. and we started to go to all the air shows. That's how I met the chairman and founder of VistaJet. And he, um, who, by the way, is a real entrepreneur, mm -hmm. started a company 20 years ago. This year is going to be Vista's 20th anniversary. Oh, amazing. Um, started a company 20 years ago with one single Learjet, which is a very small aircraft. Mm -hmm. Today, we own over 300, close to 360 aircraft around the world. That is crazy. That's um, a huge amount. I've been on one of your jets. We flew together with it's, your family. It's, it's great. And I think they're beautiful. Really, if you look at it, um, it's, it's really incredible to see what 
you know, the team and our, our founder created from 20 years ago, because um, he was frustrated with in the marketplace, if you want to fly privately, you must go buy an aircraft or you can obviously charter with a one off charter, but you also, or you can buy a fraction of the aircraft. But if you charter, you will never experience what a true ownership would feel like. Right. So he wanted to start a company that take away the asset risk from the end users. But at the same time as the end user, you can show up, go to the airport and fly the way that you would if you owned the aircraft, except for that you don't need to fly 400 hours a year. You can fly 50 hours a year. Mm -hmm. You pay for the hours. Mm -hmm. So the asset risk is not with the customer. The company needs to finance the assets. That's how I met him. And that's where, because my company was financing the fleet mm -hmm. um, or we were discussing to finance the fleet. Mm -hmm. um, he pitched me to join Vista. Okay. Um, which after I think over a year of conversation, yep. I, I decided to take the next risk to join Vista. When I, when I was joining Vista, Vista owned about just over, we had close to just over 30 aircraft. Okay. So you took Vista from 30 aircraft to 300. Not me, me and my team uh, together. When I just give joined, the credit to the team when the credit is due. <laughs> um, we, when I just joined, we had, I started as the head of Asia Pacific. Uh -huh. I was commuting from New York to Hong Kong. Right. Um, with, that's a, that's long hours. And you also have family at the same time. How were you juggling all of that at the same time? I had a, I had a little baby. Uh, she was, how old my, was she? My oldest daughter at the time. She was two years old. Wow. And, uh, I think I, you know, today I have three kids. The great thing about having kids is that I think one of the things I learned the most about having kids is that what they really make you realize, and you really have to, to be efficient in doing mm -hmm. everything and how you prioritize your life I and how you structure your life. Because that's another thing that I think a lot of people watching this episode who know you, maybe work with you, for you, whatever that is right in your team, they will, I would like them to see how you are juggling it all, but also that it is not an easy task because you make it look easy. Thank you. Well, I have, I have to say, I have an amazing, um, I have an amazing team both mm -hmm. at home and at work. Yep. Um, I have an amazing husband and my team at work, not only just, you know, at work, you have to manage down and then you manage up, right? I have an amazing, my peers and, and ultimately the company's exco, I have tremendous support in yep. what I do. But um, also you are very good at prioritizing because like every time we speak and meet, it's always very clear that you're so extremely passionate about your work and what you do and you feel tremendous responsibility. But at the same time, you never miss your date night. You never miss putting your kids to bed. You never miss those crucial moments where you want to be part of their lives and you make sure that you are there no matter what's happening outside. I think, I think it's about making, for me, I have a to-do list every day. That is, I have the most important things I need to do, right? Like you said, the bedtime with my kids are the most important thing. So that I don't miss because I only spend one and a half hours every day with my kids on the weekdays. Yep. So I want to make sure that I'm there for them. And I think, um, where, my job, I think this job was so, so interesting about it is that like uh, I mentioned before, my entire career, you're taking a calculated risk where you work on a trading desk, you kind of know what's going to happen because you work towards that where right now with Vista, like we have hundreds of flights that take off and land every day. Yeah. What's incredible is that not every single flight is different. Um, so there is a lot of uncertainty. There exactly. is a lot of making sure that you need to make decisions on the spot and very efficiently, very quickly to make sure that nothing goes derailed. Exactly. And to, you know, a shout out to our amazing crew and people that are doing the flying work. Mm -hmm. If you work for a commercial airline, yeah. you wake up today, you will know from 365 days away from today, where you're flying to. 
because right. that's your assigned routes. For pilots and crew that work with us, you could end up in Tahiti or tomorrow you could be in Buenos Aires. So they're very different, right? You could, because this is where I think in private aviation, which is a very, very large sector, is the deep, deepest market in the United States. It creates a lot of job and there's a lot of people that are very dedicated to this career mm -hmm. um, to make sure that we are carrying business travelers. That's why there's a reason it's called business aviation. The largest user of private aviation is for executives to travel for to work, like our corporate clients, for example. Yep. Um, so I think is I have uh, the amazing team at work. They're very dedicated and I think for me, I try to make my day as efficient as possible mm -hmm. in my life. Um, I travel about half of the time. Yeah, so, you, uh, you, you split your time between the UK and the US and that must be a lot just even on, on your body to be switching over time zone, do you even time zones, do you even have a sense of a time zone at all? <laughs> um, I, to be honest, I try not to think about it. And I think what's great about about my work is that, you know, I have two daughters and a boy and my oldest one, she's, she's 10 now. I take her to work when I can. I take her to a day in the office or I take her to like a trip. She starts to appreciate what I do to understand what I do. And what it takes. What it takes. And, you know, she says that, oh, you're, you're always working, but I know that it's important, like to you. Um, and she always says that, for example, I would say, oh, you know, you cannot do this like you want to do this. You cannot do this this way. And then she's like, now she starts to say, OK, you know, just let me try because I know that if you try hard enough, you will succeed because that's what you always say. So I think. Do you think that's what it is? And do you believe in prompting them in a certain direct direction or do you want them to figure it out themselves? Uh, I think. Obviously, you know, I'm a mother. I want to make sure that I can give whatever that I can, right, to my children to set them up for their life. But I do think in life that I believe, at least that's, that's my belief, yeah. I think the most important thing to, that contributes to a person's succeed, success is grits. And I, I think that's one thing that um, as a person, you can't learn it. In, in classroom. You need to develop it. Do you, you need think? To, I, I think you need to develop it, and it's a thing that you could be developing it from, uh, you know, from somewhere with very harsh financial conditions, and you could also develop it when you're having a, a more privileged life. And I, I think it's something that it has is intrinsic. You need to figure out y yourself. I I believe that's what what can make a person succeed because. Obviously, hard work, but that prompts hard work, right? Hard work is, is number one. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think you need to be passionate about what you do first. You will work hard at it, so you'll be good at it. I think initially when you're, you're doing something, you need to figure out what's the end results you want mm -hmm. and what is the impact of what you're doing to your immediate circle, circle and to your community um, and you know, my job today, I have a very big, uh, responsibility with, with the flights, with the people mm -hmm. that we carry. People say that when a private jet lands in a certain place, in a certain city, yep. each private aircraft, each flyer can have the average economic impact to local economy is about $20 million. Okay. Um, so that's very significant. The jobs that it creates, not just the flights you know, surrounding people to support his flights, but what are the people that are flying to do in that place, right? Mm -hmm. Because they, they're about to, to make an investment to decision or to, um, you know, to start a new business in the local community. So that's where I You are enabling them and you're enabling efficiency behind the scenes as well for them to go and do their business and support local communities further. Correct. I mean, I, I, you know, I want to, and this is why I love, I love the job I'm doing, but mm -hmm. you know, honestly, I also have to because people paid us to do it, right? So, um, well, I mean, there's that too. So one question that I really want to ask at a risk of being repetitive, because I'm pretty sure you've been asked this before. Um, 
carbon footprint. How is Vista going about that? Because you guys have a lot of planes flying around at all times, and some might say that it's very, it's not sustainable, and all around that, it's just like, why not fly commercial where multiple people can benefit from that emission rather than just maybe one single individual? Uh, well, that's a great question, and I, I do, I get asked all the time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, by, by, by journalists maybe, and uh, most importantly, I, I get asked at home. I get asked by my, you do. By my, by my 10 year old uh -huh. uh, about our responsibility to, to their generation and to the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I think I want to start with, I think, uh, so the, the entire aviation industry, that's including commercial aviation where you're flying, the entire aviation industry contributes to 4% of the entire carbon emission. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know, people might think, for example, we're eating a piece of steak. Depends on where this piece of steak is from. The steak comes with carbon emission. Um, we all have a responsibility to contribute on how we can make sure that we're reducing that amount in our daily life and to, be, to live responsibly and consciously. And now, Private aviation specifically contributes to 2% of the entire aviation carbon emission. So that's 0.08% of the entire carbon emission. But now that being said, as, as one of the largest companies, but SSI will be the largest private aviation company, we owe it, we have a responsibility, and that's what we have been doing um, over the past we're actually a leader in sustainability. Mm -hmm. in, over the past six years, we've been collaborating with a company called South Pole. South Pole? South Pole. Okay. Um, so South Pole supports different projects around the world, including, uh, you know, through wind power, water power in Amazon, in Africa, in Asia Pacific, on different projects. Mm -hmm. So what we do with South Pole is that we started charging or give our members an option to contribute to their carbon emission for the number of hours they fly. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really, really proud and happy to see and to report that over 85% of our members opt in to our carbon emission. So they pay a certain amount of money, which is not a lot of money per hour. They're paying less than 100 US dollars per hour to uh, contribute to their hourly rate, mm -hmm. which you know, with VistaJet, the hourly rate is around twelve thousand to twenty-five thousand dollars an hour to fly. So they contribute that to their hourly, and at each year we would give the money amount to to South Pole, and they would contribute to different project. So in that that elevates the carbon emission. Correct. So that will reduce elevates eliminates eliminates elevates. reduce reduce the the carbon emission um, into what our clients into our what the members and our fleets are flying. Another thing that we're doing is that our aircraft, we have the latest technology. We have the largest fleets of an aircraft type called Global 7500, mm -hmm. which has the, the latest uh, avionics and how it burns fuel. It, it makes it very efficient. Mm -hmm. um, Vista on board product, we source it through products that are sustainable on board so that we make sure each single one product that we Everything, everything that we use from the pajamas, the slippers, to the cosmetics that we, we use on board, they're, they're more sustainable. Okay. And also, I wanted, to, I wanted to let you know something which we're really excited about. We, we just announced it last year. I don't know if you're familiar with, with, a, um, with a type of field that's called SAF, which is Sustainable Aviation Field. Right. So they were um, EU now are requiring a lot of the companies so when you fly mm -hmm. you must contribute as a passenger even when you're flying commercial you need to pay a certain amount of money because each airline from uh, there's a deadline coming very soon in the next couple of years each airline when you're flying you must contribute a certain amounts certain amount of your fuel have to be the sustainable SAF, the sustainable aviation field now when you're flying with that fuel, your carbon emission is reduced mm -hmm. um, up to 80%. So sometimes when you're wow. flying entirely, a plane that entirely flying with SAF, there's no, it's carbon neutral, there's no carbon emission. 
Uh, that that so, is crazy. I did not know that. So it's our industry is making a lot of head waves with that. Virgin Atlantic actually just took the first flight that is 100% safe from London to New York. Wow. And there is a, a manufacturer that makes private aircraft Gulfstream. They just took the first, their G700, mm -hmm. also cross Atlantic with entirely fueled by SAF. So that's carbon neutral. Now, SAF is very expensive to make mm -hmm. today because of the R&D that has been put into it. There are about three to five producers around the world. For example, there's a factory in San Francisco that can make it. There's a, there is a company in Iceland that will make it. They're very, they're, now the cost is, is forbidden. I would say for an average flyer, because you wouldn't want to pay that much money for stuff. Now, the big companies, United Airlines, American Airlines, here you have Air France, or you, British Airways, they have all bought future contracts and current contracts on stuff. So the thing about SAF is that the more that is being made, the cost that will come down. Right. Because of the initial R and D, you know they could be made from uh, made from uh, from waste, from food waste, or okay. from general waste. Because is in general is good for our, where the material how SAF is being made, right? Or made from um, uh, from crops. So what VistaJet has done, we are the first private aviation company. Mm -hmm. Last year, we went out and we actually bought a very sizable amount of SAF uh, with, with our partner in, through this company in Iceland. And so we now also give our, our customers an option. When they fly, they can contribute to SAF. They could do 10% of the single flight on SAF, or they could do 100% of a single flight on SAF. That's Currently, amazing. Currently, it's very expensive, but mm -hmm. again, like I said, more like, users, higher quantity, lower cost. Exactly. Yeah. So now makes sense. what's very important about SAF is that it's very hard to, to buy, right? You have to buy future contracts. Mm -hmm. um, again, we are a leader in sustainability. We have been sourcing SAF. So last year we managed to buy a pretty sizable quantity. We're going to continue to buy SAF and obviously to comply with EU and ultimately in the future to comply with with the United States with FAA regulation, because SAF is the future to make our industry carbon neutral ultimately yeah. by the body IATA require all the airlines by 2050, we have to be carbon neutral. So um, that's amazing. It's all coming guys. That's amazing. <laughs>where do you want to start? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, I feel like it's kind of like one of those when people get a gift with a card, it's like, but you kind of have to read the card first before opening the gift. To me, like, this is the gift. This is the card. Same. I think <laughs> I want to have the steak first. So let's just, great. let's just open the gift. Let's go Ooh. into. Ooh. Okay. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. That's really good. It is really good. It's really happy. Mmm. It turned out. It's perfect. And actually, chimichurri makes the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's give this another try. I want to have another bite of the steak. It's so good. Ah. Uh, mmm. I mean, quick salad. Can't go wrong with it. Quick salad. Delicious. You're just going ahead with your steak, huh? Mm -hmm. Like, you just can't get enough of it. So good. <gasps> Love it. Do you want to um, give this a little um, taste? I mean, it's just fresh ingredients. Mmm. It's great. Yeah. Love it. Wow. I mean, and it's such a quick dish. I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank you for coming on the show and telling your story. Where can our audience find you? Uh, we have a website. You can always come to... Uh, the website, the can they sign up? Do you have like a newsletter or something they can it, sign up? We have, yes, we have you come to the, our website, vista.com. There's all the updated news. We are, as a company, we're on LinkedIn. Um, as a company, we're also on Instagram. Personally, I'm not on Instagram. Um, so there's 
everything you need to know and keep up with the amazing things we're doing. For example, we just launched a wellness program okay. for our flyers that are, you know, how do you make sure your diet is great in when you're flying 45,000 feet. So we just That's an important that one. one. Amazing. So if you want to keep up to date with all things private aviation, VistaJet, uh, please visit their website, a LinkedIn page, their Instagram, and sign up to their newsletter so you get updated information on all the things that's kind of coming. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I had a great time. Yeah, love it. And we're going for lunch on Friday, so I'll see you then. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Yay. Yeah.